watchmen wait for the morning more than the watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. Lord God, we gather in the house today to say our hope is in you. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for bringing us to this time. We bless your name today, oh God. We gather to say you are our God and we are your people. We offer up our hands, our hearts, and our voices in praise to you today, oh Lord, declaring there is none like you. No one, no one can do what you do, oh God. We have searched, oh Lord. Our lives have been empty until we have come to know Jesus Christ as our Savior. And now we declare, oh God, there is none like you. We thank you, Lord, for every good and perfect gift. We thank you for all that you have done, and we thank you for what you will do today. We thank you for hearts that are gathered, and we say, have your way in this place. Let your glory shine in this house, Lord. As people of God, we know the reason for our hope. Our hope is in Jesus who came and gave his life for us and offers to us abundant life on this side and eternal life on the other. And so we like the candle of hope this morning. Thank you, Sister Darcelle. serving in hope with us, among us, is Sister Darcel Williams Hart. I'm going to ask you to come back to the front. As I call your name, I'm just going to ask you 
as you come to the front, to see pe so people can see you and appreciate you. Our finance chair, Sister Sheila Lucas Cole, our treasurer, Deacon Gary Bernard, our envelope steward, Sister Monica Skinner. She may be in the kitchen helping out, but she's here this morning. Our trustee co-chairs, Sister Lana Pleasant and Sister Tina Taylor. Sister Tina, you can just stand up behind me. <laughs> <laughs> the trustees, are we do whatever trust, whoever we have present with us this morning, all of our trustees, trustees who are present with us. We have Sister Christine from up top, Brother Perry Colley, who is just voted uh, or confirmed on yesterday. Sister, yes, up front. Sister Benita Frazier. Behind me, Sister Nellie Renzelli, who also uh, was confirmed on yesterday in our quarterly meeting. Um, Brother Henry Taylor as well. We have some past trustees, I don't know if they're here, um, who are serving with us. Minister Thornton Williams, Sister Janet Monroe Last, and there was one other person who just, and Sister Alexis Smith, stand up behind me as well, amen. And then our chair of our ministry, our deacon's ministry, Deacon Thane, H. Thane Pleasant, and our deacons, Deacon Olusagan Odesanya, who is uh, working the camera, so you know, wave your hand. <laughs> Deacon Melinda Day can stand up behind me. Deacon Daisy Williams. Amen. Deacon Gary is already here. Amen. Oh, pre past trustee. Did you just leave this year? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs>
Father God, I pray this morning for members of our congregation. Father, I ask you to look down at this time upon Sister Kelly Paris. Strengthen her, Father. Touch her, God. Comfort her. Father God, I pray for her sister, Kathy. Oh God, you know the concerns that lay on their hearts. You know all about it. And we, God, just lift them to you. This morning, God, I especially lift up Brother Eddie Gibson to you, God. God, touch him. Speak to him. Father God, we pray, God, that you will sustain him, that he will know, God, that you love him, that Jesus cares. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched. Father, we thank you for this church one more time, for our leadership, God, for each one of our ministries, God, for the Canadian Baptist Federation, Lord. You know all these things about us, God. You know what we want, want to do, what we ought to do, and we pray, God, this morning, Move in, stir us up, God, that we will be the people, that will be the church that you would have us to be. And oh, God, that we will shine that light, that Jesus is the answer for this world today. Besides him, there's none other. There's no other name given unto men whereby we might be saved, but at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. He's my Lord. He's our Lord. And oh, how we love Jesus. And this morning we just come once again with excitement in our footprints, in our footsteps. And excitement in our voices. Just excitement, Lord. Because we know the answer. We have that answer. Tell it. The folks, the old folks used to tell us, I'm going to tell it. Tell it. Share it. This world needs to know. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray this morning. Thank you, Jesus, that you already know and that you fix it. In Jesus' name we Bow and we pray. Amen.
I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Consider this pericope on this first Sunday of Advent and meditate with me on the thought, life is hope. Life is hope. Let us pray. Lord God, at this the moment of proclamation, we invite you to open this word to our understanding and our hearts are grateful that you care enough to send us a word. We pray, Lord God, that our ears be open to hear it, that our hearts be open to receive it, that we would believe it, and then, God, we pray that you would give us the strength to live it. Thank you for your truth says that when your word goes out, it does not return unto you void, but accomplishes the purpose for which it has been sent. And so do a work in us today. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus, let me decrease now so that you would increase. And the word comes forth as she would have it. This is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Life is hope. We have a great many folks in the world today with various form, forms of spirituality. We got the Church of Costco going on. You have heard, I'm sure, of the other major religions like Islam and Buddhism, Hinduism, and of course the mother of Christianity, Judaism. There are many, many other cults and religious sects that are not as well known. You know, I work on the Interfaith uh, Committee on Chaplaincy. It's a national body that uh, tries to make sure that those who are imprisoned in Canada receive the spiritual support that they need, whatever their faith tradition is. And so I sit around the table with a great many different faith religions, including some pagan religions. So you might know these major ones, but some others that maybe are not as well known, uh, like Wicca, the earth-based pagan religion that worships nature, or the Santeria religion, that originated in West Africa and found its way to the Caribbean through the slave trade. We have Rastafarians that we try to have representation for and spiritual support for. There are many of them. The point is that these spiritual practices grow out of humankind's need to connect to the Creator. We have something innate in us a longing to connect. And even folks who do not know Jesus can feel something tugging at their hearts. There is a soul felt need to reconnect to that spirit, to that one who is greater than ourselves. Amen. People are trying to find themselves and find some meaning in their lives. And when they don't know Jesus, they reach for alternatives. <laughs> that is when we can offer help. If we are anywhere in the proximity of somebody who's searching, we ought to, like Deacon just reminded us, tell somebody about Jesus. We can tell somebody about the goodness and the love of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our, and our Sustainer. And we can tell them not only in words, but in action, in our deeds, in our demeanor. Sometimes I have to catch myself and say, okay, I'm representing today. Because it's every day, 24-7. Yeah. You go out into some of these places and some people will get on your last nerve. 
But you have to remind yourself that you're representing. Amen. Hallelujah. And that is the way we tell people about the Savior. That is when we who believe can offer to others who are searching the reason for our hope. That is when we may join with the author of this letter to the church in Ephesus, this wonderful prayer for those who do not know, to come into the light so that they may know the hope to which God has called all of us. And it is a beautiful reminder to those who already believe that God has a glorious inheritance in us and incomparably great power, it says, that is exerted for us. The same power that brought Jesus back from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This letter is not just for the church in Ephesus. It is for all who believe. This is a universal truth of the kingdom, not just applicable to that church in that place in that time. The letter to the Ephesians starts with talking about God's incredible plan for all of humankind. It tells us how God chose us and predestined us for adoption into God's family. Yeah. To all who received him, him being Jesus, and believed on his name, John says, Jesus gave the right to become children of God. Believers have been adopted as daughters and sons of the living God, Y'all quiet, but them shouting words. We have been adopted into the family of God. We are grafted in. God has claimed us as his own. The one who made everything there is, the creator of heaven and earth. All of the marvels that you see in the world. He chose you to be in his family. Them there are shouting words. <laughs> One of the benefits of our adoption is the hope that we have in Jesus. On this first Sunday of Advent, as we wait excitedly, anticipating the coming of the light into the world, we take a hold of that hope. During this month, as a church family, let us join together to encourage those who labor faithfully among us. It's not easy to serve in a church, y'all. I'm telling you, the church is one of the hardest organizations. It is an organism. It is a living body. But when we organize ourselves and we try to work, it is one of the most difficult places to serve. People are not always kind or appreciative. But I want all our volunteers to know that we recognize that resolve that it takes to serve. Amen. And we say thank you. Yes. We say Amen. thank you. Amen. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for serving the Lord and his church because Jesus is the reason for your hope. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Jesus is the reason. In, in Ephesians not only reminds us of who we are and the benefits of being a part of God's family, it also emphasizes that our journey of faith does not end when we come to Jesus. That revelation is actually the start of our transformation. God is making us over. So the prayer is that we will gain wisdom and greater revelation yes. that we will get to know the Lord, yes. learn God's ways, discern the Lord's voice, follow the Lord's lead, obey the Lord's commands, and grow into the people that the Lord wants us to be. I'm sure you have some ambitions for your life, but God has a plan for your life. And you need to make sure that your ambitions line up with where God wants to take you. It is a process of change, a reshaping of who we are so that we can reach our full potential. 
so that we look more and more like Jesus, not in physical appearance, but in thought and in action. When you walk with the Lord for a time, you see where you've come from. Yes. Hallelujah. When you look back and see where you come from, yes. you ought to be able to see a difference yes. in the way that you think. Yes. You ought to be able to see a difference in the way that you are. You ought to be able to see a difference in the way that you understand things. There ought to be some stuff that just don't bother you that much anymore. Yes. You ought to grow out of all the pettiness that you have. Maybe when you're younger. Because some stuff just ain't that important. We ought to be able to mature into people of God that can help others along the way, who can see our example and go, wow, I want to be, I want to be like that. I remember somebody asking my mother, how, how is it that you're just so calm and, and nothing seems to ruffle your feathers much? And, you just seem to have a bit of wisdom that mama says it comes with age. <laughs> comes with age and experience. Walking and talking with the Lord. Can you imagine if God got as bothered about stuff as we do on a day to day basis? We might find ourselves back with Noah <laughs> trying to get on a boat. process of change. We have to be remade. We have to be reshaped. Our whole way of thinking and being has to be transformed into the image of the Savior. And that requires us to open our hearts and allow God's Holy Spirit to work in us. God won't force it on us. We have to be willing to let Holy Spirit work in us. We can do that more easily when we know the hope to which God has called us. Our hope is not in the things of this world. Who hopes for what they already have? Paul asked this in Romans. Who hopes for what they already have? Our hope is in Jesus. Our hope is in the return of the one who said that he is coming back to get us so that we can be with him. Our hope is beyond this material world. Kohelet, the preacher of Ecclesiastes, tells us that God has set eternity in the human heart. And that innate sense of something or someone greater than us is persistent in us. There is a God-sized hole in us that can only be filled by the Savior. Human beings have a sense that there is more than just what we see in this life that we live for a few decades on this earth. You can, you know, those of you who do house cleaning, my great frustration <laughs> is dust. I don't think I've ever lived in such a dusty house or one that accumulates dust so quickly. And so you dust one day and then a day or two later you're looking, you go, how is this dusty again? I just dusted two days ago. And so you dust again. You get up in the morning, you make your bed, you go to bed at night, you mess it up again, you get up the next morning, you make your bed. You go to bed at night, you mess it up again, you get up in the morning, you make your bed. Is that all there is to this life? You get up, you go to work, you spend your day at work, you do what you do, talk to mostly the same people. And then you go home at the end of the day and you have your supper, you watch some TV, and you go to bed. And then you get up the next day and do the same thing. There has got to be more. There's got to be more than just that.
But there's got to be more to life than just the systems that we built in this world. Yes, there's satisfaction in things that we do. Yes, there is joy in things that we do. But there's still, there must be more than that. And then you live and then you die. And that's it. And you have to say, what was, what was the point? There is more than that to this life. And that is why so many people are searching. They are searching for meaning. People are talking about coming off the grid, getting off the grid, dropping out, you know, getting away from these systems that we set up, communing with nature, spending time meditating, just breathing, just breathing, allowing the breath of God that God placed in you to work in you, to give you a peace and a connection because we're connected to the created order. As a part of creation, we are connected. But some of us live our lives in such a way that we fail to make the connection or allow that connection to be the key component, the foundation of our lives. You have to wonder if this is all there is. What's the point? All of our activity is in vain if all there is is nothing in the end but a hole in the ground. Yes, there's pleasure in life. Yes, there's satisfaction along the way. But the Lord, I came to tell you, the Lord offers us so much more than just that temporal satisfaction of fleeting things. The longing of the human heart for more is a longing for Jesus. Yeah. It is a longing for our true home. It is the longing for our eternal family. Yeah. For those who believe while we are in the world, in him we live and move and have our being. We function in the world, but our eyes must remain fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Jesus gives us the power for living by his Holy Spirit living in us, giving us the strength to do what God has called us to do and reminding us of our true home and our eternal destiny. It is because of Jesus that we have hope beyond this world, beyond what this world offers to us, beyond these temporary things that rust and rot and tear and break, beyond what we can see with our natural eye. It is because of Jesus that we find purpose in this life and that we look forward to our lives beyond this life. Otherwise, why do an oppressed people keep fighting for justice and equity in a world that often turns a deaf ear or a blind eye? Because we know as long as there is life, there is hope. Why do believers give up everything to walk what others may consider uh, an uncertain path into an uncertain future? Because with God, there is certainty. There is the certainty of love, of provision, of light, and life. And where there is light, there is hope. Why do we gather week after week and proclaim the gospel message over and over again? Are you really going to hear something different today than you didn't hear last week? Or the week before that or the week before that? Because the bottom line is always going to be Jesus. <laughs> well, why do we do it? Because there are those who still need to hear what that bottom line is. There are still those who need to hear about Jesus. Our work is not in vain. While they have life, there is hope. Sister Roseanne came to the Lord through the witness of her sister. And then she went home to be with the Lord. There is hope as long as there is life. There is hope for revelation, the light of truth, 
that draws those who do not know the Savior of the world? Hope for redemption in Christ Jesus who gave his life so that we might live? Hope for the abundant life that Christ offers, granting us the gift of his peace, of his joy, of his love, of his presence, despite our earthly circumstances. Hope for victory, even as the enemy of our souls seeks to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Hope in the face of grief and despair, mourning and weariness. Hope in a dark world that seems bent on its own destruction, hope in the face of hatred and violence, corruption and moral decay, hope for a better tomorrow when the light of the world returns to gather us together in his kingdom forevermore, hope for an eternity in glory with the one who made us to be a part of the beloved community, hope for a new heaven and a new earth when the former things have passed away and Christ has established his kingdom forever. Hope in a baby born thousands of years ago, a baby who came to save us just because he loves us so much. Hope in the miracles that he performed, the truths that he taught, the ways that he made, the love that he shared, and the peace that he gives. Hope church, not just at Christmas church, but hope every day for every day. In the Lord we have hope. Remember the woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years. Remember the man born blind who went along for, I don't know, we don't know exactly how long he, but over 16 years old. Remember blind Bartimaeus sitting by the wayside until he heard Jesus was coming. Remember the man who sat by the pool of Siloam waiting for the waters to be troubled so he could get in. Remember the lepers. Remember the one I talked to you last week about who said, Lord, if you're willing, and Jesus said, I am willing. Where there's life, there's hope. Change is coming. The question is, can you wait on the change? Can you believe and trust and know that God is coming and the change is coming? I don't care what it looks like to your natural eye. I don't care what your circumstances look like around you. I don't care about what you're going through. I'm wondering, can you remember who's in it with you? Can you remember that the God of hope is with you right in the midst of your storm, right in the midst of your situation, that he comes to heal, that he comes to deliver, hallelujah, that he comes to save. Can you remember that the God of hope is at work? Sometimes we can't see it, but even when we can't see it, he's working. He never stops working. And it's all for your good. Working it out for your good. I know sometimes it doesn't feel that way. I'm a witness. <laughs> it doesn't always feel that way. But that's when you have to know that you're not alone, that he's in it with you every day. Every day. These earthly lives are full of trouble. Our lives are full of hardship. But they are also filled with the good gifts of God who loves us. Our God who encourages us. Our God who broods over us. Our God whose Holy Spirit constantly works in us. Our God who is sustaining us and providing all we need. This is the season of hope. But hope is not just for a season, church. For those who believe, as we live from day to day, as long as there is life, all life is hope. Amen.
If you're here this morning and you have not availed yourself of this hope that we have in Jesus Christ, if you have not received him as your Savior, if you have not heard his call from Calvary's cross where he died for our sins, or he died to redeem us, to restore us, to reclaim us, to give us back our rightful inheritance uh, in the kingdom of God. When he came to restore us and restore the broken relationship, if you have not availed yourself of that, this is your time. The Lord is speaking to you today to come and be a part of God's family, to come saying, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Jesus Christ died to save me, and I receive his gift of salvation today. I believe that he died on the cross, that he rose on the third day, and that he is alive today, and one day is going to return for all who believe. If you're here this morning and you haven't received him, why don't you come as we sing together? What are we sing? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Thank you. 